This is a walkie-talkie I made using ESP32. I also made a PCB extension hat to make it more compact. As always, I also designed an enclosure and 3D printed it to make it look nice and durable. It took me around two months to complete it. The result turns out very well. It uses a mobile battery to provide power. In today's video, I will show you how I made this ESP32 walkie-talkie. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. First thing first, let's see how it works. Hello. Hello. Hello, my name is Ken. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now let me go through the whole process of how I made it. As always, the internet is a place full of inspiration. I have wanted to make my own walkie-talkie for a long time. When I searched ESP32 walkie-talkie, I found this YouTube video, which has a very detailed explanation of how to make one. The creator of the video is Atomic14. So big shout out to Atomic14. Thank you for sharing this great project. In his video, he used the ICS-43434 microphone. However, I only have some IMP441, so I used IMP441 instead. He used a Max 98357 audio amplifier. I happen to have some in my hands too, so I will use the same amplifier module. I believe any other type of amplifier will do the same job well. As for the main ESP32 board, he used a tiny pickle, which I don't know where to buy it right away. So I just turned to my ESP Duino board that I used in many of my projects. For the push button, I found some arcade game buttons in my stock. So I will go with this button. And a switch. Well, I don't have one. But I created a PCB in Arduino extension hat form factor just for this purpose. I will talk about it more later. Now, I will get all parts ready for my first try. The microphone IAMP441 just doesn't even look like a microphone, but it is, and it is really powerful, even in such a small package. The IAMP441 is a high-performance, low-power, digital output, omnidirectional MEMS microphone. It consists of MEMM sensor, signal conditioning, an AD converter, anti-aliasing filter, power management, and an industrial standard 24-bit I2S interface. Wow, very impressive, isn't it? As I mentioned before, I will use the Max 98357 amplifier module. It is a low-cost digital PCM input Class D amplifier that provides industrial leading Class AB audio performance with Class D efficiency. Again, it is compact too. It could fit in any project using an audio amplifier. And it is cheap. I will prepare some ground and power extenders for the pin header socket. If you have many wires connected to the ground or VCC like this, you may feel my frustration. And you may end up doing the same thing as I did. Since most development boards only have like one or two ground pins and VCC pins, the idea of the extenders is not bad, but it looks really ugly. Okay, now let's connect all the wires. Look, this is a new ESP32 development board. I still have a dozen of these. I use this board in many of my projects. If you're interested, you can go through my playlist and find out more about it. Although, Atomic14 provided a schematic of how to wire up all the parts. 
since I'm using the different board and different modules. So I have converted it into my version of the schematic to make everything works the same. If you understand the theory behind it, it is not that hard to convert the schematic to your own. Now I will prepare the speakers for the walkie-talkie. Of course, two of them. We need to use the prototype extension board to make the wiring possible. At this point, I think the prototype extension board is good enough to meet my requirements for this project. So I didn't plan to make PCB just for this purpose. After all the wiring with the help of the prototype extension board, we are finally here. Since it is a uh, walkie-talkie, so we have two sets of them, of course and with the ground and VCC extenders and all those wires. I'm a little upset. Well, I'm just prototyping and nothing is final at this point. The main purpose is to confirm everything is working with all the modifications I made from the Atomic 14th schematic. Now let's connect the power and see if it works. Good morning, YouTube. Good morning. How are you? This is a walkie talkie project. If you like the project, please subscribe to my channel. Well, it works fine. The voice is coming from another terminal. This one is a receiver. When it's receiving the data, the microphone is not used. You can hear my noise from this speaker. Right now, I haven't prepared a push button, so I use this jumper, jumper wire to act like a push button. So now it's connected, and my voice is transmitted to the receiver. And uh, this is what I'm going to use, push button for the arcade game. Now we have a working prototype, but I'm really annoyed by the messy wiring. Now it's time to design a PCB and order from PCB way. I drew the schematics in a keyCAD and converted it into a PCB. It only has a couple of components, so tracing is not hard at all. It has all been done in a relatively short time. After a couple of days, I received the PCB from PCB way. It is carefully packaged and the PCB looks great. Can't wait to solder everything and replace the older prototype. So this is a new PCB board, so uh, we don't have to use all those messy wires, so everything you need is this extension head, you just uh, put it into the socket and everything is done, so no more wires, it should be looking better, okay, so let's do that. It's time to prepare the extension hat. This time I have to solder some service mount components. Two resistors and two capacitors. The solder paste I bought from AliExpress is easy to use. However, I found it hard to control the amount of the solder paste you want to dispense by hand. I use heat gun to solder the surface mount components. The hot wind is a little too strong, or maybe the solder paste is too much. When the solder paste starts to turn into liquid form, the components just float it away. 
I have to use a tweezer to hold it into place. Now everything looks nice. I cleaned it up with some alcohol cleaner. After that, I soldered the stackable pin header to the extension head. I also need to solder the male pin headers for the display, microphone, and audio amplifier. And, of course, two sets. Now they look like this, and they are ready to go! Like every project, we need a nice enclosure to put all the parts in and keep things neat and tight. I designed a case in Fusion 360 and printed it with my Prusa 3D printer. Prusa 3D printer bears a high price tag, but the results never let you down. Okay, now let me move everything to the new case. Since the PCB is making all the messy wires gone, all we need is to connect the pin headers with each module board like this. Now everything is ready. Before I put everything in the case, now let me do a quick test. Hello. This is from another terminal. Can you hear me? The sound is great. As you can see, the PCB extension head is working as expected. So let's move on. To make the case sturdy and fix everything seamlessly, I designed the case to be using many insert nuts. After many trials, I found out that using a tweezer and a soldering iron is working well for me. After the insert nut is heated, don't push the nut too deep with the soldering iron. Instead, use a flat surface of the tweezer to press the nut in and keep it as perpendicular to the surface as possible. Since we have two major pieces for each case, I need to heat set all the nuts for four pieces total. That's quite a lot of them. Using a pin header socket makes it too tall to fit into the case, so I soldered the amplifier board directly to the PCB extension head. I also added wires to the microphone board, so I can install them on the case cover. You will soon see how it goes. the speaker and the push button in space. Now secure the speaker with screws. When everything is in place, it should be something that looks like this. Last but not least, I added a USB 
receptacle to the battery holder to use a mobile battery to supply power. Hello? 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 Now it is working fine after everything is assembled. This little bumper makes the case firm and also protects the push button from being clicked accidentally. Now everything is done. How do you like my ESP32 walkie talkie? But just wait, here's one more thing. You may have been wondering throughout the whole video, what is this for? Well, I designed it to be holding an RGB display. The pin header for the display is already on the PCB board. The next thing will just be some programming to make it work. I was planning to add some easy looking user interface, like something showing the current status of the walkie talkie, like talking or receiving data, or even draw some waveform when the voice data is received and played. However, that will make this video too long. I guess that will be the content of the next video for this series. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and don't miss future updates. Finish, please. See you next time.